Meghan Markle is a dolphin, not a shark. At least when it comes to investing, the latest addition to her portfolio, the handbag brand Chester Collective. Many things have changed since Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, moved from London to California. The couple has blown up the myth of Windsor unity, had a second child, opened up to Oprah Winfrey, participated in a documentary about themselves, and otherwise become tabloid fodder. Depending on your point of view, they are either champions of the battle against a hidebound, racist establishment, or grifters out for themselves. Through it all, however, apparently, Megan's ability to move merchandise has remained notably high. So much so that in 2020, she decided to start putting her money where her taste was and began investing in a small portfolio of female-run companies. The latest, Sesta Collective, which specializes in basket bags that are hand-woven by a collective of women in Rwanda and finished in Italy. Megan originally discovered the brand while online shopping. I spend a lot of time just Googling, looking for brands, Megan said last week on a call from her home in Montecito, just after she and Harry had returned from a tour of Colombia. When people are online looking for things or reading things, I'm trying to find great new designers, especially in different territories. Megan wore a Chester bag to a dinner date she and her husband had in May 2023 with Cameron Diaz, Gwyneth Paltrow, and their spouses. Afterward, as photos of Megan with the bag spread, Sesta's founders Aaron Ryder and Courtney Weinblatt Fasciano said they noticed an almost immediate uptick in interest. We were on our way to Mexico to shoot a lookbook, Miss Ryder said. We got off the plane, got our internet on, and all of a sudden, this one style that had been a little bit sleepy was totally sold through, and we were getting a lot of back-in-stock signups. We knew there had to be some reason that these were selling so quickly, so Courtney did some internet sleuthing to find out. We had more sales in one day than we've ever had. She and Miss Fasciano wrote Megan a thank you note, they said. A relationship ensued, and this summer she offered to become their first outside investor. Megan would not say how much money she had put into the brand or what ownership percentage she has, but Miss Ryder and Miss Fasciano confirmed it was a minority stake. Megan said she realized how much attention was focused on her clothing choices in 2017 following her engagement to Harry when she wore a bag from the Scottish brand Strathbury for a public appearance with him. A founder of Strathbury said the bag had sold out online in 11 minutes after Megan was seen with it. When Megan learned that the boost in publicity and sales she had caused had helped Strathbury expand its workforce, it changed everything in terms of how I then looked at putting an outfit together, she said. It's not that different from dressing for a role, but the role is her. Times where I know there is a global spotlight and attention will be given to each detail of what I may or may not be wearing, then I support designers that I have really great friendships with and smaller up and coming brands that haven't gotten the attention that they should be getting, she said. That's one of the most powerful things that I'm able to do and that's simply wearing like an earring. Megan's financial support is nice, Miss Fasciano said, but her gesture of faith in Chesta is even more important for the business. Miss Ryder and Miss Fasciano are the only full-time employees at the company, which has an annual revenue of about $1 million, its founders said. Its bags, which cost hundreds of dollars, are typically produced in small batches of between 25 and 50 units. The weaving for each bag takes between four to seven days to complete, and the founders say they prioritize responsible production and fair wages over their profit margin. With Megan's involvement, Miss Ryder and Miss Fasciano are hoping not only to grow their bag business, but to eventually expand into other categories and to begin working with female artisans in other developing countries. 
Megan's interest in investing in brands began during the pandemic when lockdowns meant there was less opportunity to turn a paparazzi moment to her own ends. Her first stake was in Clever Blends, a vegan instant latte company. Now there are between five and 10 brands in her portfolio, she said. She sees them as a complement to her own nascent lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard. Investing in them has helped me line up for this chapter where I'm investing in myself, Megan said. She thinks of her modest venture capital initiative as dolphin tank, as opposed to shark tank, she added. These are friendly waters, she said. No doubt you noticed on the Duchess of Sussex birthday that she was holding this beautiful teacup. And you probably thought to yourself, wow, I like that, right? Where can I find it? Well, I'm going to help you out. Or maybe I can help you, maybe not. Because right now, you may be beyond help. <laughs> and you know why. I don't even have to tell you, but I'll just humor you and say this. What happens anytime the Duchess of Sussex decides that she's going to give us a glimpse into her daily routine or her life, certain, I guess, average typical household items can all of a sudden become something that is highly coveted by the masses. And what am I trying to say in this very, I guess, uh, erudite, long drawn out way? <laughs> I guess I'm trying to say that you ain't gonna be able to find that cup no more because it's sold out. Yep, it's sold out. And I'll tell you why. As a matter of fact, I'll quote Yahoo News. They say in Yahoo, it says, it's Meghan Markle's 40th birthday and while the Duchess of Sussex is busy giving back in form of a newly launched initiative to help women re-enter the workforce, she has also given us something new to add to our shopping list. Last week, the Duchess of Sussex, in a video of herself and actress Melissa McCarthy, announcing the project called 40 Times 40, or 40 by 40, and among some of the hilarious tidbits, she also gave us a glimpse into her routine, including a covetable bit of drinkware. The British royal family is, of course, well known for their affection for tea. So perhaps it's no surprise that Meghan Markle herself is also a sipper, and certainly no shock that she has impeccably stylish taste in teacups. In the video, Meghan can be seen with a beautifully patterned black and white teacup and saucer. The style appears to be from Burley's royally named Black Regal Peacock Collection. That's right, it's from the Black Regal Peacock Collection. Though the duo is currently sold out, they do appear to be available separately, and the pattern can likewise be found on a number of other ceramics, so you can round out your collection. Mega's new 40 by 40 initiative is the latest in the Duchess's dedication to women in the workforce. For the project, she asked people, including 40 of her celebrity friends like Adele, Amanda Gorman, Deepak Chopra, and Gloria Steinem, to dedicate 40 minutes of their day to helping a woman returning to the workforce after the pandemic. So there you have it. You know, I could easily see, um, well, you know, I shouldn't say that, but I guess it's just wishful thinking. It would be so much fun if the Duchess of Sussex had her own, like, Oprah's favorite thing list. Now, I do have a couple things that I have uh, used or purchased that I saw Oprah mention on her show, like my Nikon D3200 camera, which is a little dated at this point, but um, I got good use out of it, and it, I'm, I'm glad to have it. And as Oprah said, it was really a great item because it was literally, you know, it's like a professional camera for people who don't know much about cameras. So um, that was my 
contribution to Oprah's um, wish list or her favorite things list. So yeah, it's no surprise that when Meghan Markle uses or buys something or ever so subtly just gives us a glimpse of her life, then automatically that item is completely sold out. And of course the pattern, Black Regal Peacock. I think I catch the reference there. Well, anyway, that's um, how you can find it, if you can find it. But otherwise, from what I hear, they are sold out. But they do have other accessories available, and I'm sure you can put it on back order. In November of 2019, Elle magazine attempted to explain the um, Meghan Markle effect when it comes to retail, in particular for fashion. Like, for instance... Uh, this article here, somewhere in the middle of the article, it says, It's hard to put into words just how influential Meghan Markle's fashion choices are to the world, so let's put it into numbers instead. According to the global fashion search platform List, year in fashion 2019, the Duchess of Sussex was the country's most powerful dresser, and her outfits sparked on average a 216% increase in searches for similar pieces. After she wore five different shirt dresses on their royal tour of South Africa in September, searches for the category grew 45% over a month. Her club monocle dress sold out in less than 24 hours. Following the 570% spike in searches, the Royals J. Crew shirt saw a 102% increase in searches for the brand. As for the year before, searches for halter neck dresses were up 40% following the royal wedding, while the term halter neck tops increased 21% week on week. This was also the first time we ever saw such a huge demand for halter necks. Yasmin Botcher, List Senior Communication Executive and Royal Expert, exclusively tells LUK it was also good news for Givenchy's creative director Claire Waite Keller who designed the bride's wedding dress as searches for the brand increased 61% the following week. As British designer Stella McCartney who designed the second bridal look for the wedding reception in Frogmore searches for her dresses increased 3000% the day after though this would have also been boasted by Alma Clooney's wearing Stella McCartney at the nuptials. So as you can see, the Megan effect, the Megan Markle effect when it comes to retail and in particular fashion, is still something that has not escaped anyone's notice. And so the idea that the Sussexes are somehow in financial trouble and not fulfilling their obligations, the problem is they have too much work. But I couldn't say it was a problem because they're so hardworking and so capable and so efficiently, I guess, well-placed in this situation. I don't see that it could ever be a problem for them. So that is a glimpse into the effect that Meghan Markle has on just about everything. 